All right, so in the last video, we calculated density, and we obtained a density in one of these two units, which now we're going to use as a conversion factor in calculations. All right, let's just jump in with the problem. An object with an unknown mass is submerged into a graduated cylinder containing 50 milliliters of water. The final reading on the graduated cylinder is 94.5 milliliters. If the density of the object is 1.43 grams per centimeter cubed, what is the mass of the object? Now, if we can figure out what the volume of the object is, we can use the density to convert between that volume and the object's mass. So the clue here is that the graduated cylinder initially contained 50 milliliters of water. And once we entered this object in, uh, the graduated cylinder now read that it had 94.5 milliliters um, of, or, or that's the reading of, of the water. So remember, volume by displacement, this now difference in volume is going to be equal to the volume of the object. The volume of the submerged object. So that means 44.5 milliliters is the volume. All right, so if we know the volume, we can solve this problem. So let's start with the volume. We'll start with 44.5 milliliters. Now we know that one milliliter is equal to a centimeter cubed. And now our, our density states that there is 1.43 grams in every one centimeter cubed. And so our milliliters cancels, our centimeters cubed cancels, and the mass of the object is 63.6. Grams. All right, let's organize uh, what information we know. Uh, a solid cube with a mass of 103.55 grams, so we know mass, uh, and, it, and the density of 14.3 grams per centimeter cubed. They want to know what would the lengths of each side be. Now, remember, um, volume can have uh, many different formulas, and the volume of a cube is actually equal to just the length of any one side cubed. Because in a cube, right, the, all the sides are the same length. So we want to know what the length of one side is. So let's start with the information that we are given. So we're going to start with 103.55 grams. I'm going to use the density to get us into centimeters cubed. So we want to have our grams on bottom, centimeters cubed on top, uh, and so we'll get our our volume here. 7.24 this is centimeters cubed. And now that we know our volume, we can plug that right into our volume equation, which says that our volume is equal to the length cubed. So to get our length here, we need to take the cubed root of each side and if we do that we get that L is equal to 1.93 centimeters and uh, here the, the question didn't state uh, what unit of length but we could imagine that they might ask us for something like inches and then of course we could still convert further and say 2.54 centimeters is one inch uh, or we could say how much that is in feet, right? 
12 inches, 1 foot, and so on. Alright, for this problem, a student needs 3.5 liters of a certain solution. Uh, but the student's only able to measure out the solution by mass. So if the student happens to know that the density of the solution is 8, I'm sorry, 0 0.845 grams per milliliter, how many kilograms should the student weigh out? So here we know how much we want in a volume, or how much we are starting with, or, or seeking to attain. This number is the one where we need to start with in this problem, uh, the 3.5. Now, since we know that 3.5 is what we want, and it's in liters, we can't directly use our density to get into grams. We need to first convert liters into milliliters. And the conversion for that is one liter is a thousand milliliters. And now that we have milliliters, we can use our density. For every one milliliter, we know that it's 0 0.845 grams. Now, our problem states that we should see how many kilograms we need to weigh out. So we can simply do one more conversion. A thousand grams is one kilogram. And we'll see here that our liters will cancel. Milliliters and grams cancels. And so the answer is 2.96 kilograms or, or 3.0 if you want to use the right number of sig figs. I want to show you one other approach to solving these problems and that involves using the formula density mass over volume. Now in all three of these problems that we've done, uh, we, we knew two things. We knew either the volume and the density, or we knew the mass and the volume, or we knew the mass and the density. And, and we set up a conversion factor to go from one unit to the next. But you could always just plug in the values you know into a formula, like this. Uh, so let's imagine that uh, we have a problem. In fact, let's just use the problem we did the first time. And in this problem, we knew um, the volume of our object was the difference between the starting amount of 50 and the final amount of 94. So we knew that the volume was equal to 44.5. And we also knew that the density was equal to this amount, 1.43. Grams per mil. So the problem is asking for the mass of the object. So if we plug our two knowns into this equation, it would look something like this 1.43 grams per mil is equal to, now our mass is what we don't know, and the volume would be 44.5 mils. Now we would want to rearrange this equation. And if we did that, we would want to multiply both sides by V, and we would get that dV equals M. So our mass times our volume equals M. So 1.43 times 44.5 would equal our answer. Now let's take a look at what the formula looked like the first time we did this we essentially have the same thing. We have 44.5 times 1.43. This is exactly what we have using the formula. Here we're seeing it with dimensional analysis and we're using conversion factors to cancel units and to convert. Here we're just plugging in these values into a newly rearranged formula uh, and we can still obtain the same answer. 63.6 grams. In the next video we're going to talk about Avogadro's number 6.022 times 10 to the 23 uh, or otherwise known as the mole.